Yeah, it's an amazing city with an amazing buzz and what a great backdrop for the Tribeca. And I, I yeah. think um, Robert De Niro is known for having co-founded that, right? And he's, you're hearing him speak this weekend. That's right. I'm looking forward to that very much. Um, I'd love to ask him a question or two uh, yeah. about the legacy of cinema and something that we've thought about with Seeing Rachel because our film is about human trafficking. Yes. Um, you know, that we as filmmakers have a social responsibility and what does that look like? So, you know, we're talking about firsts here, first Tribeca, first time in Lisbon, but also the first time that I've met in the flesh, um, mm -hmm. the film's executive producer, Sandra Isabel Correa, who is a native of Lisbon. So there's this UK oh, uh, connection and that's wonderful. And we found each other on uh, stage 32, which you might have heard, might not have heard, um, it's a the, the world's largest uh, uh, platform for those involved in film and television industry. And yeah. it's uh, it just encourages people in their gifts, in their craft. And also there's an educational element and certification element to, to help people get up to speed in the industry. Because we as writers, we're all about the writing. We're all about getting the story down. Yes, and then when it's finished. It's like, well, now what do I do? How how am I going to translate? How is this going to be seen on a screen, whether that's yes. a small screen, a device, or a large theatrical release screen? And uh, Stage Thirty Two kind of helps you connect with fellow kind of creatives, but also educates you and gives you access to some executives who can you know you can you can have kind of career development calls and things like that. And that so, Andrew, sorry, that sounds wonderful. I mean, given given that the, I think you've given us a really good condensed view of what's happened in the film industry in the last twenty or thirty years, which is, um, yeah. I think it's moved from this, you know, or maybe even a longer time span than that. But it's moved from you know those days of um, Hollywood and everything being locked into a certain point of production to being democratized into and you know broken up into thousands yeah. if not millions of little bits around the world and a little bit incoherent more people have got access but not necessarily to the funding and support you need and this sounds like a lovely use of the technology to have people collaborate together absolutely so um the aim of the ceo which is richard botto or rb to his friends um yeah. was to democratize the industry oh and how do you do that? It's great to have a concept. Oh, that's a really bright idea, RB, you know, but no, you know, RB is great at actually, you know, assembling the bones and putting flesh on the bones to get this thing. This is what it's going to look like. We'll start with community and then we'll start with education. And now they've moved into certification. So anywhere around the world, you can study investor agreements. You can study stage lighting. You can, you know, uh, uh, every possible skill that you could have in filmmaking, you can get a certificate in that. And there you go then on a register. So anybody in the world, say you could be in South Africa and you could say, well, how do I find a director of photography, a cinematographer? Go to that database. There's somebody that's done a certificate. You know, whatever it is, whatever that kind of, it could be a production accountant, you know, you can find them there. They have certifications. So, you know, they know their job. Very and good. Very good. And it's called Stage 32, did you say? Stage 32. With right. very, very good. Uh, web address, stage32.com. Okay, so any budding filmmakers, uh, anybody who wants to network, learn their craft, can go to Stage yeah. 32 and learn more. Now, we need to find out more about you, Jeff, because you're here uh, about your, uh, as, as much about the industry and learning more about the industry and connecting with people about your own film. Can you, yeah. where, where are you at with seeing Rachel? Please tell us about the project. And, and is it being made? Are you coming here to get it made? Where are you in the process of that project? And what's your part in it? Uh, I am the writer and the director of that film um it's because of sandra really sandra starts telling me about taking responsibility and look at production getting back into production yeah um so i have now set up a company a production company sandra is a wonderful kind of business mentor she's been very successful in business 
And so my writing skills have now got that kind of business skills approach of this is how we do it. This is how the industry works. This is what I need to do. And Sandra has been very much a promoter of me getting, dare I use the term, my hands dirty with as a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are now at the stage of looking for development funding. So yeah, you right. find development funding, which is a percentage of the budget. And from that, you then employ uh, a producer. You employ, most importantly, a casting director who can then uh, find, you know, we, we, have a, we have a secret short list of people we want to approach. But yeah. we can't do that directly. We have to do that through a casting director. So that's what we'll be doing. And then when we have a name attached, we can then start talking to people about the full budget. So Sandra's responsibility is to find development funding and then find the full production budget. Yes, yeah. It just seems a bit like the music industry where you can be a very gifted player, but to actually make it in the world and in the business, there are so many other parts to it. And that's what you're involved in now, isn't it? You're you're presumably a great storyteller and you've got a great idea, but there's so much more work to do to bring that story to the public consciousness. Oh, yeah. I mean, you start, but let me tell you how Seeing Rachel came about. So I wrote this in yeah. 2012, okay, which is a good 12 years. You know, I'm still yeah. waiting for it to be produced. Sandra tells me it's going to happen. We're working towards it. You know, we're going to do this. Um, it came about by a dream. This is going to sound very Jungian. So um, <laughs> I, we're good with that. We're good with that. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, you and Carl, oh, another Carl. There you go, Carl Young. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I had this dream of me being laid on a bed, resting on my elbows, kind of perched, and in this darkened, solid, darkened room. And I started hearing footsteps, echoing footsteps coming towards me, getting faster and faster and faster and faster. My breathing is. <sighs> You know, uh, my heartbeat is boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, a young girl, aged 10 or 11, appears in front of me, kind of panicked, looking around. My name is Rachel Anderson. Please don't forget about me. And then that was the end. That's That's a good start to a movie, though, isn't it? And I woke up and that's actually, yes, is going to be the start to the movie. Yes, got to be. A dream. Um, From there... I woke up the next morning, thought, I've got to write this down. So I wrote it down. I have these little lovely black notebooks. I take them yes. everywhere go with me, you know. Um, and I thought, well, who was, who was Rachel Anderson? You know, why is she concerned about being forgotten? You know, all this thing about memory as well. And so I thought, well, Rachel is obviously a young school girl. Right. Well, what are her parents like? So I started with, in writing terms, what you call a character web. So she has a mom, she has a dad. Okay, what's the relationship like? So the dad, there's no spoiler here, so you're, we're okay. Um, right. The dad, the gambling problem, gets into debt. To pay off his debt, he sells Rachel into right. sex. Yes? Now, this is not something plucked out of the air. This is, you know, there are, I've, I've kind of done my research. So seeing Rachel from that point of the dream, took a year to write with research and forever changing things, editing, you know, kind of everything. And then um, I was looking to get that film made a little while later and things kind of fell foul of that. But I've got this script and it's quite different from, you know, we've seen numerous films about trafficking yes Uh, they tend to be like in two camps one is the kind of action hero that saves the day so you think of jim caviezel and the sound of freedom yes you think liam neeson in taken although i am not convinced taken is actually about human trafficking i think it's about revenge because we all know liam neeson has the certain kind of skill set um you know uh so but you you have this action figure, action hero, saving the day, saving those who have been 
you know, manipulated and exploited for sexual kind of gratification. Now, the other model is the kind of educational thing. How does this happen? Yeah. So you and, how go, do we stop, and how do we and how do we stop it? Right. Because that's where I think you come in, isn't it? With your a social conscience and, and a wish to change society through your art. Absolutely. And the way to do that, in my mind, as a storyteller and as a filmmaker, is not to educate people. Because then you're giving people, oh, it's kind of matter of fact. This is how yes. it happens. So you have a young lady in, in very poor and vulnerable situation, economically, socially, looking for a way out, looking for a better life. Somebody comes along and offers them a way out. Oh, I know a casting agent at a modeling agency. Uh, I can get you to them. And yes. people have been saying, well, it can't be that simple. That's ridiculous. But if you have no hope and you are in a vulnerable social position, if somebody offers you a way out, you're probably going to take it. Well, Unfortunately, we see so much of this in the world, don't we, at the moment? Yeah. So, you know, it is about exploitation. We are living in a sex obsessed uh, society. Yep. And what happens when demand outweighs supply is that exploitation is not very far behind. And that's what the modern day slavery industry, if we can call it that, is all about. Mm. And well, it's, it's that unbelievable that we, we are in an age where, where there is an industry. I mean, you, you know, the, the fact that you can mm -hmm. identify as an industry is a disgusting yeah. indictment on where we're at as human beings. And hopefully your film will you make a really good point about Liam Neeson and, 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 and how the movie industry, if you like, exploits human suffering to make mm. a revenge movie rather than actually educating and entertaining people to have it stop. And hopefully yeah. that's where you'll, you'll be able to come in and, and be part of ending the problem. Well, we are. We're, we're hoping that the film will compel people to action. And you yes. do that by speaking the language of the imagination. So you have a, right. a it's visual storytelling. And, and there's the thing. It's not educational. It's supposed to be inspirational. Yeah. And what? Do, how does the imagine, imagination work? It works with images. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, going back to Carl Jung, not Carl Munson, but Carl Jung, and what he calls <laughs> active imagination. Yeah. You have what he calls uh, anxieties and emotions in the unconscious. Yeah. That. As part of the healing process, and this is important, it's, it's not to uh, scare you rigid, it's part of the healing process, those need to be imagined. They need to be given visual form. Yes. So as a filmmaker, I'm thinking, with seeing Rachel, what I will do and what I have done is provide you with those images of your unconscious fears and anxieties about society. Yep. From there, you have a response. You can run away from it or you can embrace it and it's, you know, it's compelling you to action. So, you know, the United Nations say that, you know, if you've, about forced migration. There's so much of a, a problem with turmoil in the world. Forced migration is an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. UN reckons 79% of people who are forced to migrate, uh, not looking for a holiday in the UK, but forced to migrate, you know, they... Uh, it's like 79% are sexually exploited during that experience. Unbelievable, isn't it? There's also uh, another study, uh, I think with the UN, um, and it said that 20%, so that's a kind of transient, what you might call transient sexual exploitation, but right. what you have is that 20% of people who are... Uh, exploited into human trafficking, find themselves, or rather are uh, exploited and drawn into yes. um, the sex industry. So, you know, uh, you have porn, and this is not, not, you know, I'm not a moralizer, but I'm just saying, you know, if you think you I, don't, have, I, really, I really don't have any problem with you, with you being a moralizer, if you wish to be, on this very important subject, uh, Jeff. Uh, go yeah, ahead. I, you know, because then then I'm giving my position. The okay. film is giving my position. The film yes. is out looking deeper into the character. So I'm looking at the psychological or the psychology 
yes. of the antagonist, the protagonist, and the victim. Yes. I am not making a statement of my intent. Oh, I understand. I understand. Lots I understand. of um, directors who it really shows their passion for the subject, but they go over the top to make the point. Yes, yes, indeed. I want yeah. that respect to be anonymous. I don't want you to have to come through me to to, you know, to, to be sold my point of view. I, I understand that. Yeah. I want you to look at that screen and go, shoot. And make your own mind up and be motivated to do something. Yeah. Jeff, I, I need I need to move on. We've got the coach yes. and Phil waiting to chat. But I, it's been it's been very important talking to you. Um, and you're here for the Tribeca Film Festival in Lisbon, of course. I am. Yes. I've I've put your YouTube channel where people can get the get more of the idea about seeing Rachel and where you are in the journey of making your film, which I hope you yeah. do get made, and which so, so you know it can bring light to this darkness. Um, that you've been talking about this morning for humanity. Not one of our greatest moments, is it, of course? No. Um, and I'm, I'm reminded of a quote that I picked up earlier on this week that I want to, I've shared once before already, but it seems to be so true about what you were saying. The ideologies separate us. That's where, that's where we yeah. seem to be politically, right? However, yes. according to Eugene Ionesco, and I don't know who he is, but I, I think this is a great um, quote, dreams and anguish bring us together. And that's the yeah. dynamic of the storytelling you were talking about, wasn't it? The anguish, the anxiety. Uh we bring light to that in the storytelling and our dream of a better society, a yeah. better humanity can be sort of given birth to as a result of yeah. that counterpoint and looking at the dark yeah. side. This, that seems can to be I what we're about. with my thought then, having you shared yes, yours? Absolutely, go ahead. A chap called Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who you may have heard of, said, the true test of a moral society is the kind of world that we leave to our children. Yes, well said. Well, so my question this morning to you and to your viewers would be, how are we doing? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what do we do about it? Yes, well said. Well said. What a brilliant note to leave us on. Come back, Jeff, and let us know how everything's I will. We'll have to be there in, uh, in Lisbon, won't we? And I'm inviting to it. Be, be, yes, I'll come to the premiere. Absolutely. I, I, want, I want to see this made and, and I wish you all the best and love to Bristol when you get back there. And thank yeah. you well, out of that chance meeting with Kit and Samantha yesterday. Talking to you this morning. And give my regards to Robert De Niro, obviously, when you see him as well this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me and Bob go way back. <laughs> all right, Jeff, take a care and keep yeah, up the great work. So all right. <laughs> Cheers. Ciao, ciao. Amazing man. Jeff Hall there here for the Tribeca Film Festival, which happens to be in Lisbon. Um, from last night, today and tomorrow, Tribeca Film Festival and Bob De Niro uh, in town as well. Let's keep that applause going.